Hi and welcome my varieties for students. This is lecture 5. We're still working on poetry. Today we're going to look at other aspects of vocabulary, uh, including adverbs and adjectives. As you know, adverbs of all types are very popular in poetry. They are of great importance to meaning and perception. They are mobile and used by writers at will in the sentence regardless of their normal position. So most of the time, adverbs are used deviantly. Okay, in Herbert's poem D, for instance, foolishly is an adverb of manner. Move it away from its final position to a front position, which is usually a, an abnormal use of language. So, though foolishly, he lost the same. So, the clause is normally, I mean, according to the English language norms and forms, the adverb should be uh, situated between the subject and the verb, like though he foolishly lost the same, or it should be actually uh, located in the end of the sentence, though he lost the same foolishly. So such foreground and position has two indeed functions. First, to stress the man's miserable condition. So that's why you throw it up from the very beginning, foolishly, all right, and for reasons of food and meter. So it really depends and it could be done for these two purposes. Adverbs of place and time are so significant in literary language and can be exploited in any way the writer wishes. In Thomas' poem, C, adverbs of place and time are frequently used, sometimes deviantly. Now, if we are to enlist all the adverbs of place in Thomas' poem, we'll find all these adverbs under, above, among, down, about, in the sun, on the hills, in the pebbles of the holy steam. And if we focus on adverbs of time, we'll also find quite a lot. Now, in the heydays of his eyes, once below a time. So those adverbs are dominant in the poem, like signposts that guide readers to the exact direction of time and location. As for sentence connectors, we have seen in narrative sentence connectors are vital in literary language in general for their weighty implications and insinuations. Connectors are multiple. For example, connectors of addition like and, connectors of contrast like but, connectors of reason as because. Connectors of result and conclusions that are finally at the end in conclusion, as well as connectors of enumeration, first, second, third, are completely absent in literary language and considered weird though and unacceptable. All right, so you cannot like um, imagine a a narrative or a piece of poetry where it begins with first and then moves to next, third, no, okay? These are found in instructive text, but not in literary text. Plural forms, that is to say pronouns, replacing nouns like he, she, it, we, are also used as sentence connectors sometimes normally and sometimes differently. So proof forms are uh, used as connectors, okay? This is how they label them in, uh, in the analysis, proof forms. In what's word poem B, she is the first word whose reference is unstated. However, three lines later, we have a guess that it's Reference is a mate. Then in the last stanza, we discover that it actually refers to a girl called 
Lucy, all right? So when you find he or she or it throughout a, uh, a poem, those are proof forms. Now we're gonna move to another level of analysis of vocabulary. Lexical features which are stylistically marked in the following lexical sets. Okay, we look at the lexical sets in order to understand the a theme or the tone and mood of the uh, of the work. Look at this gray, long black, yellow, uh, startled, little. A blue spurt, less loud, slouchy. So these words belong to the same family of gloomness, okay, because of the colors and uh, because of the adjectives and also dejected. The springs of dove, a violet, fair, star, shining. Now all these words belong to the same family of beauty. On page 271, 270, you can find even more examples. Lexical repetition is another um, highly consumed device or technique used by authors. Uh, they would repeat certain words, sounds, expressions several times successively or sporadically throughout the work and this is of supreme importance because here the writer actually stresses on certain ideas in the context and wants you to uh, drive your attention to these ideas so every time something is repeated then uh, pay attention to it and underline it to the or related to the plot or to the idea of the theme because that's what what is all about so uh, when a word is repeated several times that means this word is uh, of uh, focal attention to the text now we're gonna go over to see some of the uh, devices or uh, figures of speech that are uh, used a lot by uh, poets in particular as uh, simile. Simile refers to images drawn by resembling something to something else. Of course by using as or like. Poem B we have fair as a star when only one shine in the sky. Okay, so fair at star. Lucy is as beautiful as a soul star shining in the sky. It serves as a justification for the poet's love and lamentation of her. Another beautiful example from D, poem D. Lord, oh, let me rise as larks harmoniously. So larks are renowned for the early rise in the morning. And here the poet uses as to draw the analogy between him and larks. Metaphor is the cornerstone of rhetoric. The best example are almost found in poetry. Look at this example. Notice how metaphor is used. A violet by Mossy Stone. Lucy cannot be planned. So this is quite expressive. Metaphorical image of her implying beauty as well as loneliness and neglect. Okay, now in this sentence, there is no use of as anywhere. So, a violet by a mossy stone. Now, this is a metaphor where we draw the analogy or the comparison without using as or like. Lilton House, the sun that is young the calf sand so the metaphors are personifications Pers personifications uh, or personification as a device is part of metaphor okay so inanimate objects are treated as animate or more precisely as persons 
Okay, now we move to hyperbole. Hyperbole is over exaggeration or overstatement used frequently in literary text. It is done for the sake of sharpening the effect of a statement. For example, fair as star when only one is shining in the sky. Wordsworth compares Lucy's beauty to an only star shining in the sky. Now this is an over exaggeration yet accepted by readers as an image of the incredible beauty of this lady. Okay, so hyperbole are also uh, uh, prevalent in uh, poetry. Archaisms, our archaic words, are still used in literature to reflect the formality, tradi traditionality, and conservatism of literary language. Remember that archaic, it means a word that is outmoded and no longer used in standard language, okay? But still, uh, many archaic words do still exist in modern literature and they use it to reflect a kind of formality or traditionality uh, to the language. A host of examples can be found in the 19th century Herbert's poem, like Credus meaning created, poor meaning poor, and notice the uh, spelling. The spelling is different, okay? The meaning you and thy meaning your, sin meaning sin, okay? Uh, in addition to the traditionality and formality, these archaisms reflect the attempt to imitate the religious language, the spirit and conservatism of the Bible. Now, many religious songs or religious uh, poems or spiritual poems do still use uh, quite a lot of archaic words just to uh, give the text a sense of conservatism and traditionality. We saw in the part of narrative that neologisms are newly created words. So writers like Dickens, Shakespeare, Milton have contributed to the richness and makeup of the English language thanks to their newly invented words. Neologisms reflect the ever novel and richness of literature. So every day, a new poets or poets invent new words, and they come up with new forms. But some of these forms actually are uh, short-lived. Uh, Others can uh, actually be used and uh, become even like part of the English language dictionary. So it depends, but the creation and the invention of new words that still happen every day. Language is so dynamic and ever renewal in literature.
another crucial part or crucial level of poetry is phonology. Poetry stands out among the other literary genres in terms of the importance as well as significance of the role of sound patterns to the beauty, oratory, and meaning of the literary work. Many sound devices are used to enhance the beauty and musicality of poetry. Now, the word rhyme, it is the agreement of the final group of sounds of the last words of lines of verse. It distinguishes poetry and plays a vital part in its aesthetics and music. Look at these examples from poem A. Land, sand. Low, pro. Leap, sleep. Beach, each. Appears, fears. Scratch and match. Now, if you put the poem in front of you and you look at, at it and you read it aloud, then you can feel how uh, musical the language is and how the use of rhyme can make it really rhythmic uh, and uh, memorable. That is, it makes it easy to memorize the lines. More examples from the other poems. Poem B, we have ways and ways or praise, dove and love, I and sky. In poem D, we have store and more, the same became, begin and sin, shame and became. All right, please read these uh, poems to feel the musicality of the lines. One more powerful and you know very much preferable um, device that is alliteration. Successive words starting with the same sound are described as alliterative. They are commonplace in all types of literary works or texts. It adds to the rhythm and beauty of language. So words starting in the same line and they start with the same sound like long and land, large, low, pushing, pole. Speed, slushy, sand, you know, it's how these three words beginning with the S sound. C, scented, less. As for consonants, is the identification of the last sound of successive words. So, for example, in heydays of his eyes, now the sound is okay, ending these two words and they make their language really rhythmical heydays of his eyes trees and leaves green and golden assonance is the difference that is the agreement between the metal sounds of consecutive words especially the vowel sounds and it has the function of reflecting the rhythmical and agreeable nature of poetry Look at these examples from A, black, land, the A sound, time, climb, the I sound, trees, leaves, the E sound, trials, daisies, the A sound. This is your home assignment for your attention.